Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Mirko, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Abba Sharma and in the segment of Poetry Critical Appreciation, I'm taking up Toads written by Philip Larkin. This poem was written on 16th of March in 1954 and was published in The Less Deceived, 1955. The poem voices a fleeting resentment against routine work. The poet is tired, he's frustrated, so he's trying to escape from the tyranny of work and also to continue working. So these are two contradicting thoughts and in the end he would like to draw or to come to a compromise where he can continue with both. So let's take up the poem. Why should I let the toad work squat on my life? Can't I use my wit as a witch fork and drive the brute of, of? So, the poem opens with a rhetorical question. The poet debates over it asking, why should he continue to bear the burdens of work and why should he let the work overpower him? The toad work has settled in the squat position on his life. So, in the other words, he's trying to say, that he's bored of the mechanical, monotonous routine of everyday life. He was uh, working as a sub-librarian uh, uh, and then uh, he applied uh, for the library in London, I suppose, and he worked as a librarian for 30 years until his death. So he talks about the work of a librarian, which is which seems to be harder than the other occupations he, uh, that he would discuss later in the stanzas. So he says that can't he use his wit as a pitchfork? Can't he use his intelligence uh, to drive this uh, difficult work away? Brute of, that is, the toad of. Now he has to work day and night. So he talks about the same in the next stanza. Six days of the week it soils with the sickening poison just for paying a few bills that's out of proportion. Now he talks that about uh, the salary he gets and the payments he has to make that is the bills and they both are out of proportion. That means the salary is less and the bills are more. So it works as a poison. That means his he's wasting away his time, his life working uh, day and night in a mechanical way. Uh, so, uh, he's finishing himself by working so much and that too is not enough for paying few bills. Lots of folk live on their wits. Lecturers, lispers, losers, uh, loblolly men, louts. Uh, they don't end as paupers. Now he draws a comparison or contrast between his work and the works of lecturers, lispers and all. So here he's using lots of L. Uh, all the occupations are listed as L. So maybe uh, subconsciously he's bringing out his own surname here as Larkin. So uh, lecturers and lispers, they are witty people. They have know the art of speaking or say uh, the lecturers, they go to university and they just give a lecture, come back, so their work seems to be more easy. Same way, losers, loblolly men are uh, 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 people who do not have that much of uh, respect. They are from the downtrodden uh, uh, section of the society, but still they work something, they get the money, they are well off, they don't end as paupers. The people 
who are uncomfortable, who have so much of lackness, who are forced to beg. So he talks about uh, these people uh, who are having an easy way of earning. Lots of folk live up lanes with fires in a bucket, eat windfalls and tinned sardines. They seem to like it. Now he talks of, uh, of the beggars who live on the roadsides, the people who are homeless. They don't have proper kitchens. Their uh, fires are in the bucket. That means temporary ones. And they eat whatever they get. Thrown away tents with stale fish or whatever is left out by other people. They are pretty comfortable eating uh, all that stale food. They do not die with hunger. Their nippers have got bare feet. Their unspeakable wives are skinny as whippets and yet no one actually starves. So here he says that um, the children are uh, bare feet, they don't have shoes, they don't have enough of facilities, their wives do not knack for money, they don't speak and they are skinny. They do not starve, they do not have enough of food. They are like whippets, the street dogs who run here and there. So they are also like those street animals who get whatever they get uh, to eat there, but they are pretty comfortable. They do not uh, bother about uh, earning more or say eating more or they eat whatever they get. Ah, oh, were I courageous enough to shout, stuff your pension. But I know all too well that's the stuff that dreams are made on. Now he says that he doesn't have the courage to quit his job, to ask his employer to keep his pension with him. He is no more bothered with this work or the salary. So, But he doesn't have the guts to do it because his dreams are made on this money which he is earning through the hard labor. For something sufficiently taught like scratch and me too, its hunkers are heavy as hard luck and cold as snow. Now he talks about another toad which is sitting inside him. Something sufficiently taught like scratch and me. Now one uh, toad is sitting on his back. That is the work. That is the uh, his that is his job, which is making him work day and night. But there is something inside him also. There is another toad which is as hard as uh, his hard luck and cold as snow. Uh, there are these similes here, and the complete expression is through the metaphor of toads. This is also not letting him quit the job or to move uh, forward and all and will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame and the girl and the money all at one sitting. Now this toad inside is not letting him uh, work in the manner where he can get the fame and the girl and the money. See. Uh, these three things he feels important in life, fame, uh, good relationship and of course money. So all these th three things cannot be uh, earned in one sitting. He has to lose one for the other. So he is working hard day and night. There is something inside him. There is something, something outside of him. So these two. You know, uh, next he says that I don't say one body is the other, one spiritual truth, but I do say it's hard to lose either when you have both. He doesn't think that the outside toad is an embodiment of the inside toad. He doesn't work hard because of the outside forces. His conscience within him also urges him to work hard. But he is in a position to say, that it is difficult for him to get rid of either of the compelling forces. So these two have a simultaneous existence 
leaving him no choice except to continue working. Now, as I already told you, it has got the rhyme scheme of AB, AB. There are nine stanzas and uh, he's taken up uh, the alphabet L uh, in the stanzas where he's comparing his job with other people's job. So, uh, in a way, this poem uh, is about the spiritual truth of working, of what you want from inside. And when you try to fulfill your dreams, your inner uh, aspirations, the outside world seems to overpower you. So all these things are combined together. It's a modern poetry. It is written in a very simple language, but still it is very deep. The elements here are not so easy. There is a good imagery. He talks about different people. He talks about the people who live on the road, who are pretty comfortable with the style of life they are living. Whereas he has so many dreams in contrast to the life he is living. So this way he has expressed his frustration, his weariness towards the modern life. I hope you must have liked the poem. Please read it again and do come out with your views. Do comment, like, subscribe and of course wait for my next one. Thank you so much.